Matthew 4, 17, from that time Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This word repent, we usually associate it with coming to the altar and crying and giving our life to God. And it does mean that, but that's not all it means. It literally means, the Greek word metanoia, it change the way you're thinking. And why should we change the way we think? How can, upon what basis can we change the way we think? And particularly, I'm, I'm thinking about thinking in a non-deistic that God made the world, wound it up, and it's run by its laws, and God never intervenes anymore. I, I'm thinking of a, a non-secular view that just ruled out the possibility of the supernatural and of the spiritual. But thinking that's related to the reality of a kingdom that is now not totally here, but it is here. It's, we live between D-Day and V-E-Day. Jesus came, and we had a Normandy invasion on his incarnation. And because he established a kingdom, he preached a kingdom, and he taught us to think according to the kingdom. The, the laws of the kingdom supersede the laws of our earth. I actually don't believe that miracles violate the laws of, of nature, so to speak. I don't believe that. I believe they're the laws of God for our natural world, but I don't believe a miracle violates those laws. Or I put it this way. I don't believe it breaks the law. What I do believe is that God uses a law that we have not yet discovered that trumps that law, just like the law of aerodynamics will allow metal to fly in the air overcoming the law of gravity. The ability to fly like that was always a possibility for people, but we needed to learn to understand, to discover the law. And when we understood that law and discovered it, we began to see right out of Dayton, Ohio, and the Wright brothers, <laughs> men began to fly. I believe that's the way it is in the kingdom of God. There are laws we don't understand. For example, a lot of disease was caused by viruses before we had a, tele, a microscope big enough or strong enough to see a virus. Didn't mean they didn't exist because we didn't have the science hadn't developed to a point that we could discover it yet. There was radiation before we developed a Geiger counter. There were far off galaxies before we developed a, tele a telescope big enough to see it. Sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of like the height of human pride to think that we know all that there is. I'd like to know something. I'd like to know why a lot of people, when they get healed, they feel heat going through their body. Well, I'd like to know what causes that. I'd like to know how God is doing that. I'd like to know in what way is it related that there can be something there and you can see it, and all of a sudden it just disappears underneath your hand. Where did it go? How did it disappear? And how to do it so fast? How to do it within a second? I'd like to know how a person who's been shot in the, and a police officer's been shot in the stomach and severed his spine, and God puts his spine back together with one guy's praying for him who had never seen anybody healed in his life. This is his first time to ever pray. I'd like to know how'd God do that? Or if you don't like having God in the equation, if you're more of a secular person, then, then, then how'd that happen? We need to think differently, which means that all things really are possible, which means there's nothing that God can't do, which means that, that we're to praise the Lord, we're to command our soul to praise the Lord and to thank Him for all of His benefits, who heals us, who, who forgives us of all of our sins and heals us of all our diseases. I remember one time I was uh, talking to the Lord about this passage of Scripture. I remember I, uh, on fr Friday or Saturday, the la last day I'd be at the office, I'd get my assistant pastor and my associate pastor behind me and say, guys, we're going to walk through and we're going to lay our hands on every chair and we're going to hold our Bible Bibles open like this and we're going to point to Psalms 103, 2 and 3. And we're going to go by and we're going to remind the Lord that your word says this. This is not our experience, but we choose to believe your word, not our experience. 
We're not putting our faith in what we're experiencing. We're putting our faith in what your word is, and our experience is falling short of, your, of, our, of your word. We're not going to bring your word down to the level of our experience. We're going to pray that you bring our experience up to the level of your word. And what I was praying about was this. We were seeing quite a bit of physical healing conditions, diseases, and things being healed. But we weren't seeing any mental illness healed. And because, uh, except one, when I first started church, I have a, a bipolar, really bad, severe bipolar. Uh, we prayed for him, he got healed. But that's the only one we'd seen. And we had a specialty group, a support group for people who were diagnosed with mental illness. And uh, it was growing really fast. We had, I think we were the only church that had a group like that. And, uh, but we became, I became so much familiar with the hell sometimes they go through when they're having one of those, one of those episodes. And I, it became right in my face, you're seeing physical healings, but you're not seeing any mental illness healed. So I said, Lord, this doesn't say you heal all diseases except mental illness. That all includes that. And so we began to cry out, and after a while, I don't know how long it was, it wasn't real long, but we began to see a breakthrough and began to see people get healed of mental illness. If you've heard Bill Johnson talk very much, you know that they have seen a great breakthrough with many things dealing with the, the brain and, and the mind and mental illness and schizophrenia and bipolar and uh, lots of things. But I told Bill that, and at the time I told him that story, they weren't seeing anything with mental illness either. And so he, he said, we're going to do that. And they began to go after it as well. There's something about pressing against something and believing that it's possible before we see it in the natural. 